If I told you iPad OS doesn't just save the iPad, but it actually redefines it, I'd mean it. This isn't just a fresh coat of paint or a few small tweaks. This is a shift in what the iPad is and what it can finally do. The last time I felt this excited was with iPad OS 16 when Stage Manager and resizable windows hinted at potential, but it just didn't stick. Layouts were locked, external displays were clunky, and apps jumped around unpredictably. I ended up back on the old way of multitasking real quick. Now with iPad OS 26, everything changes iPad OS 26 delivers what we've all been waiting for. True floating resizable windows, not stage manager 2.0, not a fixed grid, real windows that you can move, stack, resize and overlap however you like. Depending on your iPad, you can run up to 12 apps at once, drag them anywhere, resize by pulling a corner and every window remembers its exact size and position even after a restart. Each window features max style traffic light controls for close, minimize and full screen. Hold the green button and you unlock advanced layout options. So split view, vertical splits, corner snaps, tile grids and even four apps open at once with adjustable dividers. There's also an expose style overview for all your open windows and command tab finally feels at home on the iPad. It's fluid, instant and purposeful. The biggest difference from stage manager is control. Moving or resizing one window no longer disrupts everything else. Split view is smarter with presets for thirds, quarters or top and bottom splits. Drag a window near another and a divider just automatically appears. Flick gestures add another layer of fluidity. Just swipe a window left or right to snap it up to full screen and down to minimize. But what really helps managing your windows is getting to know the keyboard shortcuts. So for the keyboard shortcuts, your best friend is basically going to be a uh, globe and control and your arrow keys are going to determine like where your windows essentially go. So like globe control left, you're going to go left, grab this globe control right do right and then it's automatically going to do split view which is actually pretty cool and then obviously go control up we'll go up down and that is essentially that and then when it comes to minimizing and closing you're essentially going to hit command w to close a window command m to minimize it i don't know what the difference is between the two honestly but uh yeah that'll do that so w to close m to minimize and uh, that's essentially your main sort of keyboard shortcuts to keep in mind. Slide over the feature that pins an app on top of everything else is back. Well, kind of. You can trigger it in multiple ways. You can long press the green stoplight on any app and just enter slide over. And within the menu bar, you can hit window, enter slide over. The keyboard shortcut is globe plus option and then the right arrow to pin it to the right globe plus option left arrow to pin it to the left. Dismiss it with a swipe or bring it back by swiping in from the edge and globe plus backlash instantly hides or reveals it. Slide over windows now feature a subtle glass border showing the pinned app and for the first time they're resizable. So shrink a calculator, expand a PDF or keep a music player or chatbot off to the side without taking over your entire workspace. The only limitation for now is that you can only have one app open in slide over. So adding a new one kind of exits your current app just automatically, which is kind of a bummer because I really liked how there was like a mini multitasker before. So hopefully Apple can bring this back somehow. You can still move it side to side and just resize it freely and it always stays pinned. And I just love it for messages, notes, music, or chat GPT while working in other apps. iPad OS 26 makes the pointer feel well, normal the old fuzzy kind of blob circle is now gone and it's now a sharp triangular style cursor that feels precise snappy and well familiar especially if you're using a magic keyboard or a trackpad where the pointer lands is exactly where you'll click highlight or select is a huge upgrade in apps like LumaFusion, photometer or even canva and of course any text focused apps apple also brought over one of mac os's best little kind of touches so shake to enlarge so just wiggle a pointer and it just grows instantly making it easy to spot when things get just really busy on your screen Screen. With iPad OS 26 finally making the iPad feel like a real productivity device, this is actually the perfect time to talk about an app that really takes advantage of all these new features, and that's Craft. If you're anything like me, constantly juggling ideas, tasks, and deadlines across both personal and work projects, and struggling to keep everything organized or visualize what's next, then Craft Docs might be the app that you've been waiting for. For me, it's been the perfect solution. Craft isn't just another note-taking app. It's a complete productivity system built for Apple users who value speed, design, and focus. Tools that look as good as they perform. Honestly, I'm surprised it took me this long to try it, especially since it won Apple's app of the year. It feels like if Apple Notes and Notion combined forces, but became faster, cleaner, and purpose-built for the Apple ecosystem. With Craft, I can capture daily notes, manage tasks and projects, organize research, brainstorm visually with whiteboards, and even publish documents all from one minimal, beautifully designed space. 
I've tried a lot of note-taking apps over the years, and I've realized there are a few things I absolutely need in order for a productivity system to stick. The main reason I stayed with Apple Notes for as long as I did was because so many apps just felt clunky on the iPhone or iPad, but Notes eventually became too limiting. Craft hits the perfect middle ground though. It gives me powerful features like collections, Apple Pencil support, rich media, and advanced formatting while still feeling incredibly smooth on iPhone, iPad, Mac, and even Vision Pro. And the native feel is what really sold me. The new liquid glass redesign gives everything a soft, polished Apple-like aesthetic. And because the app is built specifically for Apple hardware, everything is just instant. I can start writing on my Mac, move to the iPad to sketch, and capture quick thoughts on my iPhone, and everything just syncs immediately. I even heard that Apple Watch support is on the way, which is going to make quick capture basically effortless. Second, quick capture has to be instant. On the iPhone, the new plus button means I can start a note without even thinking. On the iPad, Craft makes full use of multitasking and stage manager, so it works perfectly as a site app. I keep a widget on my home screen for quick one-tap captures or for quick access to my recent notes. And because Craft integrates directly with the system keyboard, I can use voice dictation anywhere. Third, I need structure and a way to actually find what I wrote. With Apple Notes, I'd save a movie recommendation or a video idea and basically just like never see it again. But Craft fixes that with spaces, folders, tags, and a layout that makes everything feel organized without being complicated. It's just enough structure to stay sorted, but enough to not slow you down. And then there's the Craft Assistant powered by Apple's new on-device models, the same tech behind Apple intelligence. That means everything is private, everything is instant, and works offline. It feels less like chatting with an AI and more like having a built-in creative partner that help you summarize notes, brainstorm, rewrite, text, and turn raw ideas into something polished. Craft has also become part of my daily routine. I use it for reminders, daily notes, checklists, and planning my week. It integrates with the Apple Calendar too, so meetings and tasks sit right alongside my notes. Whether I'm journaling, planning content, organizing a project, or just mapping out ideas, it all just fits naturally. One of my favorite parts is just how easy it is to get started. Craft has a huge library of templates, planners, habit trackers, travel itineraries, content calendars, project dashboards, even developer tools. I imported a few that matched my workflow and then customized them further. If you prefer building everything from scratch, you can still do that too, but the templates make onboarding just super simple. So if you haven't tried Craft Docs yet, I genuinely recommend it. It's completely changed how I organize my ideas and manage projects. And because it works across the entire Apple ecosystem, including Vision Pro, it feels right at home, no matter where you're working. If you want an app that's just as polished as your devices, one that embraces the new iOS 26 design language and gives you everything you need to manage tasks, ideas, and projects in one beautiful space, Craft is it. It's free to start and the team gave my view is a lifetime 50% discount on any plan. Yes, lifetime. I've never seen a promo code like this before, so grab it using the link below before they change their minds. Just, just hit the link below for the discount. Trust me, you do not want to miss out. For the first time on iPad, there's a true macOS style menu bar, so swipe down from the top edge or nudge your cursor upward and it slides in above your app and you'll see menus like file, edit, and view, plus app specific options that adapt based on what you're doing. Everyday actions are now faster and just more natural, so if you want to export a file as a PDF, for example, just go to file export as well pdf and there's even a window management tab that lets you center a window snap it into quarters or move it to an external display if you have one connected exploring each app's menu bar reveals a lot of hidden powers so things like formatting tools recent documents or even shortcuts to app settings that you might not see otherwise and that last one's a big deal because on ipad app settings have always been like buried deep inside of the system's main settings app which was never really convenient. So now you can just open up an app's settings directly from its menu bar. It's a small change, but it saves so much time. The menu bar works hand in hand with the new traffic light controls as it's always present. Even if an app hides it in full screen mode, you can still access it just by instantly pulling it down from the top. No matter which app you're in, the menu bar is always there when you need it. iPad OS 26 introduces local capture, a huge win for podcasters, creators, and anyone recording on the iPad. As you can now record a high quality audio or video locally while using apps like FaceTime, Zoom, or WebEx. Everything is saved directly to your device, letting you choose between audio only or video only recordings, depending on your workflow. It's simple to use. Just enable local capture from control center, start your call and begin your recording. The files are stored locally on your iPad, giving you flexibility over where and how you want them saved. And that's not all. Apple also improved the mic input controls. So USB microphones now support adjustable input gain with live audio meters. So you can now monitor levels in real time. So whether you're using like a DJI mic mini or an audio interface or the built in mic, you can fine tune the gain right from control center. And there's even a built in echo cancellation to keep voices crisp during calls and captures. 
Background tasks in iPadOS 26 may sound small, but they transform how you work. So previously exporting a video, downloading a file or moving data required you to stay within the app. And if you switched away, it would either pause or just cancel. But now tasks can continue in the background. So start an export in Final Cut or LumaFusion and then jump into your notes, Safari or really any other app and your export will just keep going and a live progress bar keeps you updated. This mainly works in Safari and files. So downloads, airdrops and external drive transfers, but third party apps can't adopt the API. So expect more support soon. In iPadOS 26, the doc and files app have finally become what many of us have been waiting for. True productivity tools that feel like they belong on a desktop. You can now pin folders directly to the doc. So whether it's downloads, projects, or anything you need quick access to, tap one and it opens in either a fan or grid view, just like on the Mac. And it's perfect for dragging files between apps without ever needing to open the files app itself. Inside the files app, things have been leveled up in a big way. It now feels like a proper file manager, complete with resizable columns, collapsible folders, arrow key navigation, and right click or long press options to compress, duplicate, or set to default apps. The new get info panel is a huge addition as you can now set default apps for specific file types, just like on the Mac. So simply right click, long press or press command I on your keyboard to open it. For example, if you want like PNG files to open in Affinity Photo instead of the preview app, you can now do that. Customization also runs deep here. You can change folder icons and colors, add tags, and tailor the sidebar to match your workflow. Personally, I've always preferred list views since it shows more details at a glance. And if you top the three dots at the top right, you can now toggle which column appears. I always keep date modified visible so I can quickly spot my most recent files without scrolling. Filters are another quiet but powerful addition. If you're sorting through images, say RAWs and JPEGs, you can just easily separate them using the kind filter. The favorite section on the sidebar also got a huge but subtle improvement as you can now finally pin folders from cloud services like Google Drive or OneDrive and not just iCloud. This makes it so much easier to mirror your Mac sidebar with a mix of local folders and cloud drives, ideally for anyone switching between different devices throughout the day. And if you're using iCloud, you'll appreciate the keep downloaded option, which lets you keep certain folders available offline. Perfect for travel days or flights without Wi-Fi. Just right click a folder and select keep downloaded. Now let's talk about one of the biggest finally moments in iPadOS 26, the preview app. It's something the iPad has needed for years, and it finally brings Mac level document handling to the iPad. You can open, annotate, and edit PDFs or images all without needing a single third-party app or cluttering up your photos library. For example, if someone sends over a contract, you no longer have to juggle between markup or some random app just to sign it. With preview, everything happens right here. Tap once to add your stored signature, highlight sections with your Apple Pencil, and send it back all without ever even leaving the app. It's just as seamless for images too. You can crop, rotate, or resize directly in preview. Say you're uploading an image that needs to be under a certain resolution. You can adjust it on the spot. No separate photo editor is needed. Preview also ties in beautifully with the built-in scanning feature, which makes signing or editing scanned documents incredibly fast. And everything you open stays accessible through the recents tab, so you can pick up just exactly where you left off. And this isn't some half-baked implementation either. It goes deep. You get support for text fields, signatures, shapes, forms, highlighting, magnification, and full Apple Pencil markup. It even supports multi-window use, keyboard shortcuts, and the menu bar integration makes it feel completely native to iPadOS. And all your markups sync through iCloud too, so you can start editing a file on your Mac, continue on the iPad, and switch back seamlessly. With that foundation in place, let's shift gears and go through a few tips and tricks that aren't necessarily brand new, but still surprisingly are under the radar. Starting with the files app, there is one gesture everyone should know. You can batch select files just by using two fingers. And if you're not using a keyboard, that trick alone is a huge time saver. And when you're searching in files, try typing just the first two letters of what you need, and you'll instantly get visual cues that jump straight to the exact file or folder that you're after. It's a small touch, but once you start using it, it makes navigation just feel so effortless. Now, this next one is super useful, especially if you're dealing with SD cards or external drives every day, as you can now finally erase and format drives directly on your iPad, just tap and hold the drive within the sidebar, select erase, and that's it. No more plugging into a Mac just to reformat your external drives. While you're in files, try tapping and holding on a selected item to bring up the quick actions menu. What's cool is that this changes depended on what you've actually selected. For example, with images, you can move the background, rotate, or combine into PDFs, or even optimize their size. And that last one, optimization is incredibly handy when you're managing large images. It's one of those like little additions, but just ends up saving so much time and jumping between different apps. 
If you're collecting images in Safari, there's a great hidden trick. Just tap and hold an image, keep adding more, and when you're ready, drag the entire stack over to the Photos app or an app like Craft, and it's just such a clean and tactile way to collect visuals all at once. And since iPadOS now supports real window management, Command Plus Tab becomes one of your best friends for switching between apps. But here's one that most people tend to forget. The tilde key moves backwards through the open window. So Command Plus Tab to go forwards and the tilde key to go back. It's simple, but once you build that sort of muscle memory, it feels like second nature. If you're typing without a physical keyboard, don't forget you can swipe down to minimize the on-screen keyboard and use swipe typing, which is perfect for one-handed use or just using it in tablet mode now also don't forget about apple intelligence which may not be so uh intelligent but there are some pretty useful things within the writing tools you could bring up writing tools almost anywhere that there's text and once you start using the different options and things that like within writing tools they quickly can become like second nature for example say you're reading an article but you don't have time to get through the whole thing just highlight the text tap to bring up writing tools and choose summarize instantly you'll get a clean paragraph overview of the article or you can select the key points and it'll give you a tight bulleted list of the main takeaways and it works pretty much anywhere so if someone at work sends you a word document just highlight the text open up writing tools and you'll get the same options so you can get a summarized paragraph or put it into a bulleted outline to get that quick info and then there's arguably the best part about apple intelligence which is the chat gpt integration as it's now just built directly into the system so let's say you're in pages and you want to write a resume for example just bring up writing tools tap compose and chat gpt just steps in natively you can type in, write a resume, fill in a few quick details about your background, and within seconds, you'll get a full formatted document right inside the Pages app. So no app switching, no weird formatting, no copy and pasting type of like situation. It all just happens within the app. So what does this all mean for the iPad? Well, for years, Apple seemed pretty hesitant. Power users wanted more, but the OS held back. Third-party apps like LumaFusion, Notability, and Procreate were doing the heavy lifting, but with iPadOS 26, the balance really shifts. This update doesn't just say the iPad can be powerful, it kind of proves that it can be. It won't replace a Mac for everyone, but as a laptop alternative, it's closer than ever. My iPad has been my go-to portable device for so many years now, and this update just really only reinforces that. Apple didn't just port over macOS, which Thank God, iPadOS still feels touch first, creative and just unique, but now it's also powerful, intuitive and genuinely capable. It's really kind of a statement that the iPad can be finally serious, versatile and still fun all at once. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about iPadOS in the comments section down below. And if you guys are interested, the M5 iPad just kind of came out not too long ago. So if you want a review of that M5 iPad Pro, just let me know. I'll grab it, make a review. But uh, yeah. This video has gone on long enough, so I'm just going to wrap this up here. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.